Maybe Davis Mills will be the MVP this year. Hello folks, today I'll be doing my top 10 QBs for the 2022 NFL season. Before I start the video, I have some news for the channel. I will be creating a second channel for the Philly sports stuff and have the Packers stuff as this channel. That way for the viewers out here to get a better like organization. Like on the second channel, I'll be covering Philly, Sixers, Flyers. I'll be covering that stuff and you can access on my second channel, which I just created the other day and I haven't posted anything. Is called Philly Sports Zone. You can check that out right below here in the description. It'll be my channel right here on this. The main channel here will be talking Packers. Still have Pack Reacts on Thursday nights usually. We'll just be keep doing that. I'll be posting. I'll be still doing live streams for basketball or football, like all sports games. I'll be doing that once in a while. And last year when I made this video, it got very controversial. I still had my standing for not having Lamar Jackson top 10 it kind of worked out technically it worked out because he got hurt so he didn't play and he didn't do well last season so now i will say he definitely performed better than baker Mayfield. the way i will conduct this top 10 qb list is have honorable mention which i have three because there were too many qbs and and how i'll be doing this of conducting my view of the, my top 10 qbs for the season are the stats the weapons the offensive line and where the team is. So it's kind of like looking at what they're given and how they're doing well without or with it. Like I give that comparison and to see how far a team did last year and how we'll do this season. So let's start off with my honorable mention. I have three here, guys. As I mentioned again, this is very hard for number 10 spot. So I had to put like three honorable mentions. And one of them, he didn't play since the COVID season. So that's why I'm not putting him in the top 10 because... When you look at him, he's fantastic. He hasn't played recently. And that QB is Deshaun Watson. Now you look at Deshaun Watson's history, the offseason, the off-field issues. He's having some of that. He got traded to the Cleveland Browns this past offseason from the Houston Texans for three first-round picks. We have no idea what Deshaun Watson is going to look like. Let's go off his stats from that year, that he, the last time he played. His completion percentage was 70.2. That's pretty good for because most QBs get into the 60s range. So that's pretty good statistics. 4,823 passing yards. 33 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. His pass rating was 112.4. That's pretty good. His weapons going into this season are Amari Cooper, who the Browns acquired this offseason. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. David Njoku. And those are the weapons he's going to have to deal with. But Omari Cooper is mainly the main target. It's going to be for wide receivers. So his offensive line is pretty great. It was one of the best last year in the league. The main issue that happened with this offensive line this past season was they lost their center, J.C. Treader, one of the best centers in the league. And Browns still have a great offensive line. But the offensive line last season gave up 43 sacks. That's not that good. But when you have Baker Mayfield as your QB, it doesn't really help you out much when he's going to get sacked and he was playing hurt because you saw that shoulder br uh, brace, I think it was. It wasn't all the offensive line's fault. Now, yes, there was a bunch of it being their fault, but it's not mostly their fault. I think Baker Mayfield definitely played a part in that. So Deshaun Watson's honorable mention to me because he, he can still be that talent. He was great. He was one of the top five QBs a couple years ago. To me, it's just, is he still the guy? Is he still that same guy? If Deshaun Watson plays very good, and the Browns are winning that AFC North division easily. On to my next honorable mention. So this guy, no one really talks about him. No one really talks like when you look at like QBs and Lee, nobody talks about him at all. And that is Derek Carr. Derek Carr, he came out of a cave last year basically and helped the Raiders get to the playoffs for the first time in a couple years. He's always that average QB. You never see him do well. You never see him do too bad. He's just average. When I looked at his stats last year, he had 68.4 completion percentage, 4,804 passing yards, pretty good. Touchdown interception ratio, 23 to 14. That worries me a bit because he can turn over the ball despite having his weapons, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams now, and that's pretty good weapons. And I think Derek Hart's going to do very well. But when I look at him, that ratio is not good. He needs to do a lot better throwing more touchdowns, which he's going to, and less turnovers. That has to be a must for that dude, and he's got to play well, especially going to be in his AFC West division. He's got to do a whole lot better. 
His offensive line needs improvement, definitely. They only have one guy, Colton Miller, but th this is Derek Carr. Like, he's being given the toys he always wanted to play with, and you got to make use out of them. you got to use them well. And I don't think he's top 10 QB yet. I need to see more production out of him this upcoming season, which I see happening. And then go into my last honorable mention, Kyler Murray. MVP last year for the first half of the season he was. And then you saw the second half of the season he was terrible. He didn't prove himself. He got hurt. He didn't get back on track like got like annoyed with of Kyler Murray yes he had a great completion percentage with 69.2% 3,787 passing yards 24 10 a touchdown to interception 100 passer rating he has a good stats I need to see more clutch out of him and because he didn't do well in the playoffs last year he got blown out by the Super Bowl champs his weapons he's gonna be without DeAndre Hopkins that's your number one target. So I have to see how Kyler Murray does without it and he's frustrated with the Cardinals for not getting his contract right now so I think Kyle Murray definitely needs improvement. I have to see what he does without your number one guy and see how he progresses. That's what it's going to have to take for me and him proving that he's a franchise definite QB. Now he is to me. I need to see that eliteness that I saw in the first half season. I need to see that. That was my honorable mention. Now let's get to my top 10 QBs. At number 10, I will put him on here for once. And that is Lamar Jackson. I didn't have him on last year because I didn't. he wasn't a top 10 QB to me in my view. I put him on here because I think he definitely can be, and I think he will outpass the other guys, Deshaun, Derek, and Kyle Murray. Lamar Jackson, he got hurt last year. He didn't do well after, like, towards, like, the season, the middle season. I, when I was watching Lamar Jackson last season. He didn't do well. Despite him getting hurt, he didn't play well. He kept getting sacked a lot, wasn't making the right decisions in the pocket. That was something annoying me when I was watching Lamar Jackson. All he would do is just run the ball. But Lamar Jackson is definitely a top 10 QB that coming out this year. His stats annoyed me when I was looking at it. That's going off why I didn't like him last year, because he had a 64 completion percentage, 2,882 passing yards, and 16 to 13 touchdown interception ratio. Not great either. An 87 pass rate, not great either. Yes, definitely the injury affected him when he was playing, but you got to do a lot better. When you won the MVP years ago, you got to do a whole lot better, dude. You got to do a lot better. And you lost Marquise Brown in the draft, which hurt them. The weapons Lamar Jackson has, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, and him. That's the only thing they have. So in order for him to succeed is his offensive line has to be intact because all the Ravens can do with Lamar Jackson is run heavy with him. They have to run the ball because they can't do anything else. Can Lamar Jackson be the MVP guy again? I have to see. Definitely think he's not going to be as fast as he was because of his injury last year. It hurt him especially. I think we'll see him running a lot. I think it's going to limit sometimes when it has to be, but when the game's online, he's going to run and you know it. But Lamar Jackson, to me, I think he's 10 right here on this list, and I think he should be. Number nine, Russell Wilson, Denver Bronco. Russell Wilson got traded to the Denver Broncos this offseason. Russell Wilson gets a brand new of toys. He gets Cortland Sutton, Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, Jerry Judy, and we have to see about Jerry Judy's case but russell wilson i think he's gonna fit perfectly with the new head coach nathan hackett who is with i really think this broncos offense is gonna do well the problem for me with russell wilson when i would watch him every year he do great in the first half and then towards the end of the season you start seeing him decline a bit you start seeing him decline that's what has occurred for the past years he's declined a little bit he did put up good numbers last year with a 64 a pass rate which was the same as lamar jackson not great 3,000 passing yards 25 to 6 touchdown interception ratio which is good 103 pass rating but i need to see definitely him take that step up and take that leap if you want to make the playoffs and then russell wilson i have to see that i still think he's great he doesn't have the speed that he used to have anymore so he has to be careful the sacks is what's going to annoy him. Denver does have an all right offensive line. This is where Russell Wilson is given the opportunity. Got to fulfill the need for the Broncos. Definitely better than Drew Locke in that role. Russ, I think he'll do very good this season. I think Denver is going to have a great year. I have number nine of Russ. I think he's going to do pretty well. Number eight. The reason I put him here is because he's not clutch. And what I mean by that is when I saw him last year in the red zone or when the game's online, I didn't see him deliver it. So he's going to be great definitely this year and I will see him be more clutch. But when I watched him, he wasn't clutch. And that is Justin Herbert. 
put up fantastic numbers last year with 38 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 5,000 passing yards, 65.9 completion percentage, which is all right, and a 97.7 pass rate. That's fantastic. But when, as I mentioned before, he's not clutch. The Chiefs won when it was a walk-off, when uh, Patrick Mahomes threw it to Travis Kelsey in Thursday Night Football. And I remember when Justin Herbert was like at the one-yard line. He couldn't get it in when the game was online. I remember last season. I forget what game. But he had it, and he messed up. I have to see Justin Herbert do very do a lot better in the red zone and be more clutch. Next year, he'll be up on my list. But when I'm looking at him, the weapons he has is Keen Allen, Austin Eckler, great offensive line. Mike Williams, this is a good team, Justin Herbert, and he's definitely a franchise QB. He has to be clutch, and he's great. But for right now, I put him at eight because he's not that clutch. And when I looked at the other QBs above this list, they were more clutch. Number seven, Joe Burrow, the dude who came out of nowhere when no one expected his team to go to the Super Bowl. And they, Joe Burrow put up fantastic numbers last year, 70 completion percentage, 4,611 passing yards, 34 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 108.3 pass rating. Now, when I look at the weapons he has, he had Jamar Chase when everyone wanted offense line in that draft. But they chose Jamar Chase and it worked out. Every time I watched Joe Burrow in the playoffs, he would get sacked about six to eight times a game. That's not great when you have your QB who was coming off a huge injury year prior and he comes in and plays. The offensive line, which the Bengals addressed this offseason by bringing in and drafted some. So this is, Bengals definitely addressed it here in which they should have. Joe Burrow, I think he's clutch, came up with upsets against the Chiefs when no one thought they were going to make it. And that was, this was kind of like a Cinderella story. Because one, no one thought they were going to be there. Second, they were an underdog team. Joe Burrow, to me, he's great. I love watching him. All he has to do is just keep doing it because I only saw one year. That was his breakout year last season. I can't put him higher than the list because I saw one year out of the dude. That was me with Justin Herbert last year. I saw one year out of that dude and I thought he was fantastic. He has to like be consistent. If he's consistent at doing it, he's going to be great. His weapons with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd will do fantastic. Joe Burrow here goes at number seven for me. I think he'll do well. He's definitely going to take a step up next. At number six, this dude was gifted with weapons. He, this dude got traded last offseason, came from a bad franchise, and became a Super Bowl champ. And that man is Matthew Stafford. He was the right man for the job for the Rams that they've been looking for after using Jared Goff to help them win a Super Bowl. Great idea by the Rams by just going out for finding Matthew Stafford and getting trained for him. That was a great part on the Rams and helped them win the Super Bowl. I put Matthew Stafford here. I'm not going to put him higher. This is the right spot for him because A, you had the best weapons. You had one of the best receivers in the league, Cooper Cup. You had Robert Woods at the time. You had running backs, Daryl Henderson. You had Cam Akers. Not so much, but you. He was there. You had Tyler Higby. You had so many good weapons. Your offense line was fantastic for you. And to me, Matthew Stafford is underrated because when he was with the Lions, you saw him battle for injuries, play through it. He's one of the best throwers in the league. Yes, he won the Super Bowl. He got it. People are giving him more appreciation now than he did before. But I still think he's getting underrated, though, of how good this man is. I think he's close to a top five QB. I really think he is, but he's not so yet. Because of what the weapons he was given, he's going to be great because he got more weapons. He had Odell last season. And might have him again. Got Alan Robinson in exchange for Robert Woods. All I want to see out of Matthew Stafford is him just not turning over the ball that much. That's all. He's great. Whenever you would watch Matthew Stafford in the game, you had Elite Matthew or Detroit Matthew. And a lot of times in his career was Detroit Matthew where he would turn over the ball a lot. That was the issue. But last season, you got Elite Matthew. I have to see Elite Matthew again, but I know he's going to be Elite Matthew. Yes, he's definitely going to turn over the ball. But I'm going to see more elite Matthew out of him. I'm going to see definitely out of that. So I have him finish at number six. And going into number five, I have his Dak Prescott. The man who did a QB sneak with like 20 seconds left in the game against the San Francisco 49ers in the playoff game. And didn't know how to spike the ball. That was a big oof. I like how he plays his game. He's mobile. He's He's got a great arm. He put up fantastic numbers last year with 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,449 passing yards, 68 completion percentage. That's good. So Dak Prescott, he just needs to help his team win to get past the playoff first round, basically. That is all for Dak. He needs to be more elite. He Yes, he's great. And when you watch him, 
But when you look at his surrounding, he has C.D. Lamb. He got rid of Amari Cooper. I think Dak is the MVP on that Cowboys team. I really think so because when I would watch him, he would like do crazy stuff when he was doing it. But he needs to get over the hump. And I'm gonna, I put him this high because of his talent of how well he's done. And he's definitely a Super Bowl like elite QB. His team is not Super Bowl. Him and his team need to get over the hump is what I'm talking about. But I put him here at five because he just has the brighter talent, has more upside than I think with Matthew Stafford of what he's given, been given credit. Yes, he Matthew Stafford won the Super Bowl. But with Dak, I think he's just better. And he definitely proven to be elite. Unlike Matthew Stafford, when he just took a massive jump when he had a his, like the best weapons in the NFL. Dak had C.D. Lamb. He still had to prove himself. And he kept proving that when you saw from his injury year, you saw a huge kind of separation of how big leap he took. So I have Dak Prescott here at number five. At number four, I have is Tom Brady. This man retired and then came back this offseason. And that just annoys me as an NFL fan, a Packers fan especially, because I hate watching this dude win the Super Bowl like almost every year. It's like, when's it over? Can he just be done? Just stop, please. Like, that's all I care at this point. Just stop playing the game. I really just want him gone. Yes, he's still playing well into his 40s. But when is father time going to catch up to him is my question. Tom Brady played like an MVP last season, put up fantastic numbers, over 5,300 passing yards, 43 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 67 completion percentage, 92 passer rating. His weapons, Chris Godwin, Evans, his offensive line was great. Brady had a lot of weapons and he was considered that. But when you watch Brady towards the later season part before the playoffs, he slowly didn't put up what you wanted from the MVP. He didn't put up like that great numbers. You saw that Saints game last year, he struggled against the Saints and he has struggled against the Saints in the regular season. And I have him at four because he's just playing it still. And I and I think he'll play well once again. Where he's given and what his talent is. What he did last playoff when he almost came back against the defending champs, the Los Angeles Rams in the playoffs. I think he has it. Hopefully this is Brady's last year is what I'm hoping for. Brady at four is just because of what he's done last season and what he's known for and how good he still is. He's performed on the field and he has proven it so many times. And number three, I think this will be the MVP this year. And that is Josh Allen. He lost in the playoffs because of his defense with 13 seconds left. And Josh Allen put up great numbers last year with over 36 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, over 4,000 passing yards. 63 completion percentage, 92 passer rating. I think he's going to be MVP. I really think he is, and he's hungry for that playoffs. I'm not going to put Josh Allen up higher because I need to see a little bit more clutch out of him. He's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. He's one of the best. But I need to see a little more clutch of him in the playoffs. Yes, it's definitely a team achievement of what I've always said of Super Bowls and playoffs of how it does blow this league away. I really think he is, and I think he's going to win the MVP this year. So I have him at number three. Given his weapons with Stefan Diggs, Dawson Knox, I really think that this is the time where Josh Allen wins the MVP. Josh Allen's going to carry this team. So I have him at three. Number two. Patrick Mahomes, the younger version of Aaron Rodgers. Patrick Mahomes is one of the most talented in the league. He had, he's had forever Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. Tyreek Hill left this offseason, so we got to see new weapons with having MVS, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, and we have to see how he does with the new adjustments with his new receivers. He has to see how that goes. And Patrick Mahomes, he put up great numbers with close to 5,000 passing yards, 37 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, close to 100 passer rating, and a 66 completion percentage. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to be great once again. I put him higher than Josh Allen because he's beaten Josh Allen multiple times. Best comparison I can have of Patrick Mahomes is, is Aaron Rodgers because he's making plays that no one does, and that is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers would have that. So I'm not putting Patrick Mahomes at one. So before I get into my number one pick, I'm just going to say this. Despite his failure in the playoffs since the Super Bowl he won many years ago, I'm just going to say this. He's won MVP the past two times, and he's a four-time MVP. One more to tie Pay Manning. One more. I'm just going to say that. But let's get into number one, and that is Aaron Rodgers, that bad man. Put up fantastic numbers the past two years, despite the controversy of his off-season, off-field issues. I don't care about that, honestly. I really don't. When you look at his stats, what he's known for definitely is his touchdown interception ratio. He had four interceptions. Most Kiwis would dream of just getting to five interceptions. And with Aaron Rodgers, he never throws over 10 interceptions. He's done that, I believe, once in his career. And that was his rookie season. Every year, when you watch it, he puts up unbelievable plays. He's done in the past, and he's done it now. Still, he's still playing into his eight, and he's still doing it. So I put Aaron Rodgers here at one because touchdowns interception ratio is unbelievable of his statistic. Pass range is great. 
His completion percentage has gone up and that was 68.9%. His weapons, yes, he had Devontae Adams, but he used other weapons, guys. Yes, you can go look at the statistic. He used 50% of the time Devontae Adams, but he used other guys like Alan Lazard, MVS. You've seen those be role players. Devontae Adams, if you're a QB in the NFL, why wouldn't you want to throw it to the best receiver? And so when you come into the season, He's given new receivers, Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins as his veteran guys. He has the new guy, Christian Watson, who I think is going to do very well. He has Romeo Dubs, who's a, he's a great runner. It's going to be interesting to see how Rodgers does with these new guys. But when you look at Rodgers' career, he's played through that. The only time where he's had very great receivers was the 2010 Super Bowl season and then the 2011. Now, he had Jordy Nelson, he had Randall Cobb, he had Devontae Adams as the main guys. But when you look at the other dudes... He had really no one, and he was forced to use him, and he made him better. He made him better throughout the season. Alan Lazard, but you saw how much of a difference Rodgers used him from the COVID season to now, how well he's played and adjusted in that relationship that was built with him. And then you can go into the Cardinals game last year. He had a practice squad and still won. And that just shows you how clutch and how the lead Aaron Rodgers is. What I want out of Aaron Rodgers, been the best QB I've seen the past two years. End your career with that Lombardi. But that is my top 10 QB list. Hope you guys liked it. But I will let you guys make one adjustment to my list. I'll let you guys vote on that in the comments. Let me know of who you think should have been higher, lower, should not have made it, or, or should have been in the list. But that is it. All I've got today for my top 10 QB list. I think it's still Aaron Rodgers, as I mentioned before. So guys, please do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Leave a like on this video. I appreciate it very much. We'll be having new content out soon. You can go check out the other channels that I mentioned before, Philly Sports Zone. So make sure to check that out. I will have some video up there uh, in a couple weeks. Soon about either the Phillies, Sixers, or Flyers. I'll have one of them out. I'll still be producing football content on here. So hope you guys enjoy this video. Appreciate you guys tuning into this. That's a wrap here in the studio. And as always, go Pack Go! Oh.